I was going to start without you and then let you walk into it, but then I was worried that you'd hear me talking and then I'll come in and then I have to stop the thing and go, hey, come here. going on everybody welcome to another episode of the f word podcast it's just me and bass today yo uh anthony was not feeling that great and although covid19 or coronavirus co- coronavirus code name covid19 uh has not hit us here in our middle of buttfuck nowhere canada reportedly I just told them stay the fuck home because it's my parents basement and they're both over 55 and I ain't risking shit at this point because he's in university and is surrounded by a ton of people and this thing is fucking going off like crazy rampant rampant yeah this is um this is nuts the plague as it were this is a yeah this is plague scenario mm-hmm. um Vass, you want to talk again? Sorry. Uh, hello. There it is. Um, yeah, this is Plague Scenario. Um, I underestimated it. I think a lot of people have. I was very, I don't know, maybe because of so much information that was going out there. Uh, not really. I mean, I, w- I guess I was taking it serious. Like, I would take the flu serious, which is serious because it kills so many people. But at the same time, this is the way that it's spreading. is It's quite crazy. And um, there is a... Highly recommend, even if you just listen to the 15 minutes that's on YouTube or on Rogan's podcast with Michael Osterholm, uh, it'll pretty much tell you exactly how bad this whole thing is. Um, Yeah. So I told Anthony to stay home. Mm -hmm. He's not feeling that great. He said, and at first I told him to go to the medical clinic. But then everything I was reading was like, don't tell people to go to the clinic. Tell people to stay home, you know, because... Wait it out. Wait it out because there are serious cases and it's like a manpower issue. Like, it's not only the fact that it's a virus, from what I'm understanding, it's how fast it's going. I th- I think that's what's more concerning for everyone is just how fast it's being able to pass from one person to another. Like, a regular flu doesn't have this much, like, momentum, right. as it were. Right. So I think SARS did and Mad Cow did when they first came out. True, but those were like intense diseases. Like it wasn't just a flu. Right, but this is like this is to that like the guy that Michael Osterholm, who is essentially a him and his team are detectives of infectious diseases and stuff. Mm. Um he was saying like this is this is worse than SARS. You know, this yeah. is this is a lot worse. Um this is just something that's taking over and we don't know what to do with it. We have ways of maintaining it, but because of the na- of its nature, it's Damn nearly it. impossible to figure it out because it takes, you know, like they said, two to 14 days or so to mm-hmm. for it to come up. Uh, people that have zero symptoms whatsoever are found with like thousands of signs of, in their like in their lungs and shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you and I could have it right now for some fucking reason because we were around somebody, right? That was away on holidays or something like yeah. that. And... We may never have symptoms, but we are able to carry it, and it is respiratory. That's the crazy thing. Mm. It is respiratory. Obviously, cleaning your hands is another thing, which you should have been washing your hands properly before yeah. a pandemic. Um, but the WHO, and not the band, the World Health Organization, who really should have chosen a different, uh, different acronym or a different name of sorts because the acronym is just – it opens up for so much confusion. Especially when those first bunch of articles were coming and they were saying it's a pandemic. It's like, who's saying it's a pandemic? I'm like, who is it? Who? Who what? What was where where was? Where was what now was? Yes. Uh, and so, anyways, that's the long and short of it. But, I mean, there's a lot more stuff. Movies are being pushed back. Uh, yeah. Fast 9 is being pushed back, which obviously I don't really care too much. A Quiet Place 2 is being pushed back. The E3 has been canceled. CinemaCon. NBA has been canceled. The Junos have been canceled, which is literally this Sunday. Everything is being canceled. NHL's suspended. Disneyland and shit's been canceled. Um, 
someone put out the most necessary, I guess, or the most valid uh, g- uh, uh, gif out there, mm-hmm. and it was the Tony Stark one where it's like, Earth is closed today. Yeah. And literally right. it is closed. Um, and there's no toilet paper anymore. Costco, fucking our Costco, I think, ran out of toilet paper it did. already. It's fucking crazy. Which, I mean, it's super fucking funny that it's the toilet paper that's being the joke of it. But it's like, it's it's weird that it's just the toilet paper. Yeah. Like, for people quarantining themselves, that's super, super fucking weird. Uh, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson in Australia have it. Mm-hmm. They're, he was pretty optimistic in his thing. Oh, yeah. He's just he was like, just like, we're just we got being it. precautious. That's yeah, it. That's, exactly. That's the deal with it. Um, but when Tom Hanks has it, something, that's just like, Ooh. oh, man, America's sweetheart. Uh, pretty much everyone's sweetheart. Yeah. And then you have it's Trudeau's wife has it, so he's quarantined now, too. Yeah. So I would say fuck Trudeau's wife, but it's mostly just fuck Trudeau. His wife has really nothing to do with it. So, yes. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, everything's being fucking canceled. Local stuff, too. Like, tons. We have oh, a yeah. show coming up on Sunday that just got canceled. Which show? Bob Saturday? Saget. Oh, Bob Saget did get canceled. Yeah. Um, so our mutual friend had tickets. Yes. But they're traveling to Calgary, and then we were gonna go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it got canceled. Obviously, yeah. it makes sense. Everything's gonna get canceled. They we're gonna we're gonna know what it feels like to deal with a pandemic of this of this nature. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking, and I know we're kind of getting off of like movies and how we normally talk about, yeah. but this is too too fucking interesting to not talk about. Mm-hmm. Um. It's. I was. I asked the question in our sibling group chat yesterday, because mm-hmm. um, I started with saying the joke. I got a paper cut, and I'm going to start pile erasers for some reason. Yeah, didn't really land very well, as you can probably tell already. Um, I wonder what this would be like. I asked the question, what the information stream would be like. Let's say in 2005, when Facebook wasn't around. Uh, like I'm using that as a thing because we, I have vivid, vivid memories before Facebook even existed. Where yeah, a lot oh, of yeah. people are like, they don't remember a time when Facebook did not exist. Yeah. And my sister in law was like, "Well, there, we wouldn't have realized it before it hit. Um, you know, it would have been, it would have spread, and then it would have reached to us, and then we would have figured what it was. Like all of the the way that we get information now." is at such a high pace that if it would have happened even pre-2007, then we would have had a real tough time trying to do anything about it because it would have already have, like, it would have already hit. Yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword because it's good that we're getting the information that quick, but it's also a lot of false information and hype and hysteria. So it's like, do you, do you take it seriously? Like, yeah. and I've, and I've... Did you want to take your jacket off, by the no, way? No, fine. Okay. I'm used to it now. He's got a suit on. Yeah, so it's... It's just one of those things where you can take the hype and like take it to heart kind of thing and, you know, be behind is okay. I'm going to be precautious. I'm going to do this. Or is it complete hysteria? Now, it's a bit of both. A mutual friend of ours on Facebook also posted it's like, it can't be just hype if all of China has shut down. For sure. There are the rumors or conspiracy theories that China has done this because of what was happening in America and that they're doing, they've, they've, they've this has happened or they've developed it mm-hmm. um and i'm using air quotes here as a biological weapon to show the world their power um yeah. also they're saying that i think they said turkey russia and north korea supposedly don't have it but those are the three countries that literally don't tell anybody about anything they wouldn't so even even not if they reported. had it it's yeah. not being reported yeah. yeah they they may not even have had it and as a greek person right now if no one's watched the news greece is going through some fucked up shit with border control and migrants and stuff oh yeah and that's a really really big issue and most of those people probably have this and it's coming from greece and they have it happening in italy so they're kind of sandwiched in between this thing mm-hmm. and um yeah it's pretty fucked up like the timing of it is pretty crazy oh yeah uh and not only that it's tax season Hmm. so i mean that's just very something very minor where tax season on its own is super scary at least for me i fucking hate tax season yeah um it's the roulette russian roulette (sighs) of finances pay so much fucking money markets are down oh yeah very down those are fucking if you're in a position to buy you buy (laughs) 
or yeah, just don't. Or people that last year were doing super good and now they're just fucked. Like I know yeah, so many it's people. It's gonna in my correct office. itself at the end of the day. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's only because of like how much has just come to a halt, yeah. and like people canceling stuff. Like I said, even locally, yeah. where we just got one case and in our a- province. Apparently, it's not even confirmed anymore. It was reported, but then so it was confirmed this morning, and then yeah. by the afternoon there were there was a lot of people at work saying that it wasn't actually a confirmed one. So, so I'm like, here's the, the thing: fuck? it said it was a gentleman coming in from Egypt, yes. landed in a city north of us, yeah, and he's already in quarantine, right? So if he's the only he, one for su- if for some like luck, he yeah. is the only one, and he was smart enough to quarantine himself, which he has, yeah, then. You know, unless he's knows? unless he's affecting so people much. in the plane, uh, yeah. So now, how's that working now with air flights within within Canada? Let's in say in a tube. It's a fucking tube where they share it. Same with like you know all those other like schools and they're shutting mm-hmm. places down where you're just like the cruise ships thing, which wasn't good. Yeah, they should have no. let those people go and then be quarantined on land, not on this ship that just no. keeps delivering this thing to them on it. Like they can't escape it because it's literally in the air yeah. and then they're in this box. It's like. They need to get out, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm yeah. The, I'm really curious about the, the the how fast and how frequent the news would have been about something like this back then. Mm. I think it would have been fast enough that people would have reached it via email because email was very par- prominent and the internet was like it was working, like everything yeah. was good. It just wasn't the way that it was now. But to your but the big thing is the quality of the reports would have been much much better. I think. Mm-hmm. Um. And right now, the quality of the reporting on all fronts is just fucked. That's why I'd rather listen to this Michael Osterholm on Rogan for Mm -hmm. an hour and 50 minutes, actually breaking it down. A guy that was there when Mad Cow Disease first came out, okay? Like, his job is to, his his whole department is investigating these things and trying to figure out where they come from. So, is it legitimacy behind the mass hysteria? No. Well, the, so... Yes and no. Base. I've only listened to about fifteen minutes, so oh, bear with me. Okay. The face mask thing mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Okay. The toilet paper thing is just. It, it's just one of those things that people are like, "No, we need it because we're going to be quarantined." It's not. It's not the toilet paper is going to save them How from the COVID. How much are you going to shit yourselves, people? Like just mass diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the. The severity of it is real. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um, its potential is real. All yeah. of this, all of the stuff, is actually real. It is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you can see, even in the world of movies, TV, and all that stuff, things are coming to a halt. In sports, things are coming to a halt. Mm-hmm. The obviously, it never helps for people to go crazy. And I I, I'm always reminded of. The Men in Black quote where a person is smart, but people are dumb, panicky, and insecure or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Tommy Lee Jones was telling that to Will Smith. Great line. Such so a it's like to movie. be honest to people about the aliens in that movie, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, but he was just saying, he's like, you know, but people are smart. He's like, no, a person, a single person is smart. Um, the, and it's true. The, I've, the I've, mob I've, is... Uh, I've, I've never... Yeah, the mob from gladiator for instance yeah. when he's describing it a group of people can sway things one way or another um i that's one of the quotes that no matter how old i'm the more old the older i'm getting the more i'm starting to realize like that was the one of the most like pivotal quotes of my life mm-hmm. anyways now i haven't gone far enough to see like because he was turning like he was transitioning the conversation into where some good things could happen out of it mm-hmm. um this is going this is just a massive massive test for us on a global scale mm-hmm. that um, we're hoping, they're hoping, the world is hoping to correct soon, but it's going to be a couple months of this. Oh, yeah. He says it's not like a blizzard that's two or three days. It's going to be like a winter. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not a Game of Thrones winter because that would really fucking suck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's fucking real. And I was super naive on the whole thing. Like super, yeah. super naive. And I, I feel I am. It's like, am I, am I dumb? Am I not taking this serious enough? I'm like, I don't know. Because all we're seeing are like, people making long ass posts on Facebook on both yeah. sides and Instagram than this and that. And then all of a sudden you're just starting to see things shut down, which mm. I think it's a good idea that they're being shut down because you just don't yeah. want to make it get, you don't want it to go get worse. That's the thing. Like in our city right now, zero cases as of now. 
yeah, we're lucky so far. So that reported that, that like, so yeah. If, if someone got it today, for instance, the first like patient zero. Yeah. Let's say patient zero is Anthony. Knock on wood. Yeah. In fourteen days or so, we'll know if he if that was the case. Yeah. That's the scary thing. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, like even on the surface, somebody is totally fine. Mm-hmm. But if they were, to, if any of us were to go in now, there's probably a chance that we actually have it somehow. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And on top of that, all these things are just like Earth is literally closing, which is nuts. I was, I was surprised how quickly all of this stuff is just grounding to a halt. Uh, yeah. Very much I was so. expecting there to be, I don't know, more pushback. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, E3, whatever, but when they cancel the fucking NBA. Well, NHL's up there, too. Like NHL. Where, where they haven't canceled it yet, because maybe in the cold. They've suspended it. They've no, suspended I don't it. think they're going even going to risk it. Yeah. Late night shows. That was the other one. I think I had this written down. Late night shows are no longer having guests on. So it's They have no audience members. So it's just the guest and the host, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And the this lap, is uh, a... lap track, anyway. Yeah. I, I don't think it's... um. It's obviously not a good idea to be hysterical about anything. So that's, that's what true. I was going to my point before where Tom like before I got to the men in black yeah. quote. It's like it's never good just to start freaking the hell out. Mm-hmm. Or at least there is very few moments where that's the case. Mm-hmm. I also think that it's um it's nice cuz no one's talked about politics and political correctness and all that bullshit for a long time since yeah. this thing's coming out cuz guess what? You fucking apes there's bigger things that are going on on a global scale instead of your petty fucking battles left and right. That's the this is the only good thing I would say that's coming out of this is that guess what? This shit is real. Mm-hmm. And this is something real that's going to affect a lot of people very quickly and no matter what guns, no matter what words are used, no matter whatever whatever, this thing's going to get you and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Yeah. And so I will say that I'm hoping we get out of this after with less BS on the table because a lot of people that have been living life really well, Mm -hmm. and I'm talking to a lot of people that haven't had to go through wars themselves. I'm talking about people that are sitting behind their laptops complaining about capitalism and their nice homes and big screen TVs and all of that stuff, or the people on the other side uh, talking shitty about races and all that, like both sides of it. Mm -hmm. This is real now. Yeah. And so I would say that's that's the only only positive thing. Yeah. Okay. Last week we totally forgot to bring up the Last of Us news. Oh yeah. Like I fucking forgot. So, oh, two things. What the fuck? I didn't even say it. We finally hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Yay! Which is a weird thing to segue off of something so morose or really really scary. Now back to our regular schedule yeah, program. <laughs> and here's something we hope you really like. So, a thousand subs on on uh, YouTube. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally got to it. Vasily, you weren't really around. For, you did a couple. Have you done any reviews with us in the YouTube Never. era? Nothing. Never. So, you were after, you were post YouTube videos. Sure. Um, aside from the podcast itself. Yeah. And yeah, Jesus. I didn't, I like, because we stopped and it kind of kept growing and growing. I'm like, I don't, I, I still didn't see it ever hitting Slow a thousand. Um, but yeah, it took us. Three years, I would say, and um, and a long hiatus, and we finally hit a thousand subs. Where it's going to go from there, I honestly nice. couldn't fucking tell you. Um, but yes, thank you mm-hmm. to every single person that uh, has hit that subscribe button. Um, Max von Sydow died. He yes. was the priest in The Exorcist. That's when I first saw him, and mm-hmm. he was the Raven, three eyed Raven in Go- Game of Thrones. Yep. Um, he was also. The bad guy in Minority Report. That's right. I'm yeah. Trying to remember. Uh, and just generally, just one of those actors that you see. You know, he, it's him and like Christopher Plummer that are just always good in everything they've done. And they almost kind of look the same. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but that's crazy. Hmm. Uh, another one, too, which is closer to me than it will be to Vass. Michael, Michelle Rue died. Now, most of you may not know who Michelle Rue is. Uh, I graduated from culinary school so i was inundated in a lot of culinary of the culinary world um got to know of a lot of chefs 
uh, like Marco Pierre White, who trained Gordon Ramsay, uh, the Rue brothers from La Gavroche, um, you know, big, big names in the industry, Nicola Dennis, um, now that I'm trying to think of Brian Kaufman, fuck, anyways, Michel Rue and his brother Albert, Albert, I guess, Albert, um, they were one of the, they were two, they opened up one of the most revolutionary restaurants in London back in like the early, early 80s, if I remember correctly, called Le Gavroche. Um, and they kind of took the culinary world to that next level. Um, and, you know, if you look them up right now, the Rue brothers are still legendary. Um, Michelle Rue's uh, son and Albert Rue's son as well. Like they're both still like running things and, and carrying on the legacy. Hmm. And so, yeah, today, uh, Michelle Rue Sr., um, the originator, died. I believe Waterfront is one of their three Michelin star restaurants that he currently has after Le Gavroche. So, yeah, that was a big deal. Um, at least for me and in my circle of stuff, pretty crazy. And if it's not true for whatever reason, because there's been a lot of those hoaxes, then, well, at least maybe you can look them up and find some things about them. Okay, um, Last of Us HBO series, which is essentially the Logan. Like, I, don't, I was surprised that they were thinking of doing a movie about it. Yeah. Um, because it's like, well, they kind of did it with Logan. In a sense, yeah. In a sense, minus the zombies. But if you can take the fact that they were creating X-Men or mutants, then that's kind of the same fucking thing I don't mm-hmm. know um, but I'd still fucking see it I haven't played the games so I haven't so gotten good. into it as much or at least the one game I should say not the, the games. first one yeah the second one's not even out until this year it's actually delayed as well oh that got delayed yeah. so the series Jeez. is not gonna come out until the game has been released so that's a good thing I like that yeah um, um, is also isn't it getting what got announced that it was gonna be released after Cyberpunk Witcher. Ah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get to that in a bit, actually. Sorry. No, that's okay. So, Last of Us is, is being pushed back, um, but they're not, it's not because, oh, we're, we're, our employees are working too hard or whatever. They're like, no, like, we're still keeping the pace. We're just making sure that the game is good. Right. Um, it's not a case of where they're throttling back and slowing down and everything. Um, there's right. a difference. And, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked for it. I don't know who they'd cast as Ellie and, um, and Joel. Mm hmm. I'm almost thinking just fucking cast the voice actors. Like, honestly, what's like yeah. Troy Baker seems like a good, he would be a good actor. Mm-hmm. Like he's a gr- fantastic voiceover artist and I'm pretty sure he's done some acting. And then the um, young girl that did um, Ellie, mm-hmm. right? Ellie. Oh, Anthony went to the doctor. Anthony's got the flu. This the regular? Just the regular flu. He is no longer patient zero, as we had not really seriously reported. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last of Us. Sorry. I'm going to look this up right now because I need to figure out what the fuck. What is this? Why people, People also ask, why is The Last of Us so good? It's a beautiful tale of two people just trying to make it in this disgusting world of zombies. A disgusting world of zombies. Um... Anyways, I think that they should they should just cast the regular people to do it. I think that'd be sweet. I think mm-hmm. I'd be I'd be down for that. Are they at the right age right now? I would think so. If they if they're basing it, it if they're waiting till The Last of Us Part 2, my guess is it should either be in between or after or I'm I guess just it'd be before if Joel was I like there. some accuracy in like the age, I guess you could say, like yeah. relatively close, like I don't know. I guess it depends on how close they get to mm-hmm. the source material of, like, of the game itself or if they decide to use a spin-off version and just use Ellie. But, yeah. um, yes, um, CD Projekt Red is going to be developing a new Witcher game, but it is not The Witcher 4. I read a report on this a couple of weeks ago um, when it was just rumored that they were going to do another Witcher game. And... The sad news is that Geralt's story is done after The Witcher 3. Mm-hmm. Um, are you good? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, his story is done after The Witcher 3. If they were going to name it The Witcher 4, 
this is what the developers are saying, then it would be like essentially saying that, oh, Geralt's coming back because it's a continuation of The Witcher 3, which isn't the case. So this is going to showcase a brand new Witcher, a brand new series of stories. I don't know which direction they're going to go, but it is, by the sounds of it, unequivocally having nothing to do with Geralt. Geralt mm-hmm. is done now. Oh. So uh, I'm both saddened because I'm still playing through The Witcher 3 right now. I found out. So I time if years. they're maintaining the lore, they'd be a prequel setup. No, I would. My guess is they're just going to go with a different Witcher altogether. Like there's different schools of Witchers. Mm-hmm. Geralt oh, okay. isn't the only, only one. Okay. Um, now they could do a pre Geralt one. Maybe they do one based off Vesemir. Maybe they do a spin off with Siri, which I think would be dope as fuck. Because mm-hmm. Siri is, there's short scenes in The Witcher Three where you can play as Siri, and she's so much fun to play because hmm. she's got like different Imagine. abilities. Yeah. Um. But I, yeah, I have no idea. Be really cool though. Either way, I it, it's CD Projekt Red. I'm going to play Cyberpunk 2077. Ghost of Tsushima is my other second top game. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there's a game called Starfield that I had no idea about until recently. It was it's from Bethesda, and it's like Skyrim in space. Okay. I never played Skyrim. Neither. I know lots and lots of friends of mine that loved it, and it's their favorite open world RPG of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, the Witcher Three is mine. I would say uh, next to the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time because I love both of those differently. Mm-hmm. And so, but I, by the looks of it, Skyrim also looks very different too. Yeah. But again, I haven't played it, so I can't say. And it's a first person, not really my deal. Fair enough. Which is interesting. Because Cyberpunk 2077 is first person. So I'm going to be breaking my rule. I mean, I break a lot of rules. Mm -hmm. But that's exciting. Um, You still haven't played The Witcher 3. I know. You probably won't have time. Probably not. I'll let you borrow when I'm done it the second time. That's fine. I have it already. I have have the the Wild Hunt. Is that? That's the one. Oh, okay. Oh, you already have it. Well, my roommate has it. What are you waiting for? Ipso facto, I kind of have it. (laughs) Ipso facto, it's mine. Um, 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 you said you watched, oh, Harvey Weinstein going to jail for 23 years. It's about fucking time. That was a long ass trial. I'm surprised that he only got 23. Yeah. Mind you, that's, then it turns into some big discussion on is killing somebody and raping a bunch of people the same thing. I don't know some dark territory yeah <laughs> probably not best to go down that road. <laughs> i would i would have expected them to give him at least like 25 years because what's the but, difference well once 25, 25 with no parole i get i guess so that's the other thing it's like well it's two years from is life he? i don't know it's like 70 60 years old i don't fucking know how old he is he's gonna die in there he's for sure he's so gonna they die basically gave him the life sentence right and Without he's probably not doing well life sentence yeah i would say though for that dude, based on everything that's come out, aside from the fact that Hollywood and a lot of people that spoke against him were also supporting him for many, many years, I'm looking at you, Oprah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Michelle Obama had said there, there was videos going around. Anyways, he was there was there's so much shit there. Him. But the fact that he like there are definitive reports that he did this shit, fucking send him the fuck off. Yeah. And then he had the gall to call Kate Beckinsale the C word. And say that he was going to kill her? I mean, now you've crossed the line Mm -hmm. with me. Okay? But he's going to jail, so justice has been done. My notes are all over the place, by the fucking way. I can tell. So you said you watched Hunters on Amazon? I did. Now we can talk about it since Anthony's not here. (laughs) Yeah, Anthony isn't here. Patient Zero is no longer here. So um, did you like it? Did you get all the stuff that I was talking about, or no? Did it not? I, I didn't. I uh, I didn't. I'm not. You know, I'm not as critical as you are for sure, to begin for sure, with. For sure. But uh, overall, I still enjoyed it. Um, there were times I was kind of preoccupied with other stuff, so I had to like go back, rewatch something if something like crazy happened. Yeah. Um, but I could tell the pace. Yes, was a little slow at times. It picked up and then really slowed down to kind of give you build up some stuff, sure. and you know, the character development was a little. Wayney, I guess I don't know. You could justify it in a way. I, maybe. I suppose maybe it's just like, oh, I would have done it slightly different, and that's all. Like you're looking at it, like ah, uh, he shouldn't have been. I think that's one of the points you said where he was a little very wishy washy, like back and forth a lot of it. There's too much of his back and forth attitude yeah. and his altruism, where it's like, dude, 
Stop being yeah. a little bitch. Well, and the whole and time... he was supposed to be this like super great code breaker, yeah. but they only used it like three times. It's like fucking Mike Ross in Suits, where he was using his actual gift, like the whole basis of his character, yeah. a few times. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was probably the biggest thing. And then when it counted for him to kind of hold restraint and not be fully into it, he just went ahead and did it. And I'm like, right. at the end, right? Which is like. Again, on the one hand, it's okay. I can see, I can see where some of those moments, and I honestly forgotten a lot of it on, because by the end of it, I was like, I just want this to be done. What, I was got super me, in for a while. What got me is that how many of them just like straight up killed their leads. I'm right. like, you could have put this person in cuffs or like whatever, right. tried to figure something out, but no, nope, boom to the head, boom whatever. Uh, like, yeah. it you seems- guys set yourselves back a lot. <laughs> It seemed like this supposed elite group of Nazi hunters was yeah. very amateur hour. Oh, 100%. So it's like, yeah. how elite were you all? And it's just, yeah, it, it seemed like, it just didn't seem like they were this elite squad where this kid's trying to fit in. Yeah. Like, it's not like Matt Damon showing up with the Ocean's yeah. uh, 10 crew to make them 11, but all of these guys are professionals. Well, and he he's a he's the best pickpocket, right? Exactly. So he had a skill. So whereas this kid, I guess he had a He skill. had the code skill. He was able to but, do, do decipher codes because his grandmother had said like he has a gift from God. Maybe because they were all amateur hour, it kind of helped him fit in just as well. Like all it was was just you needed know. more of the heart to kind of get through with all this shit. Maybe, but really the heart came from his grandmother. I guess so. Yeah, I, uh, like again, there's stuff I, like I that where I still enjoyed it, but yeah. It, yeah, there's a little bit of call it potholes, I guess you could say, or tons. And um, but I did like, and I mentioned to you is like the smoke and aces kind of connection. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that until you told me. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? I totally missed that. It's yeah. like the total switcheroo, live yep. the life, yep. and it's like, do you believe him? He completely converted. Do you yep. like that kind of stuff? Like, I so. wish they would have. Well, no, I'm going to say I wish they would have signaled it a little earlier, mm-hmm. but I honestly had inklings early on that something's off Well, with him. Here's with... the thing. They already hinted that Myra wasn't who he says he is in a way, too. Mm-hmm. Like, even the people on the team is like, don't believe everything he says necessarily. Right. So it was Stuff eluded, like but not to what you thought it was going to end up to. That's why I'm kind of retracting. I'm like, no, I think, like, I was picking up things that something yeah. was off the whole time. It was and indirect, yeah. for sure. So it wasn't like was how, it wasn't well. like how Smoke and Aces set up that like that agent is like I'm gonna completely change my say face. I'm gonna become Primos right. Parazza. Right. Not like how Pacino's character. I'm you know Myra. I'm gonna take over his body. I'm like I'm the wolf. I'm gonna take over the body. Whatever. Yeah. Spoilers, by the way. Too late. We're already yeah. They already yeah. figured. I didn't like the the blonde. That kept jumping back and forth. Yeah. So they had one scene yeah. early on in, I think, episode four, uh-huh. where she they literally cut to her in a phone booth making a call in German mm-hmm. and then cut to something completely different. Then later on, they had her piecing out. And a lot of it was like, I think they just did this to try to uh, make us confused. Yeah. But not the people in the show. So it was like this thing of like of they're doing this just for the sake of confusing us. But they're going to retract it because when the bat mitzvah or the wedding was happening, yeah, which that was a beautiful, that was scene. a good scene. Those that was a super super beautiful scene. Um, but then she came back and everything's fine, even though they weren't didn't trust her and stuff like that. It's like. That was so lazily done. Yeah. It was just like, well, we, we need the audience to believe this, so we're just going to throw this in here just because. And yeah. then we're going to come like make it devote most of the episode to it and then yeah. take it away just because, you know, we don't want it to be like that. We want to mm-hmm. confuse the audience into thinking that she's a double-double agent. Yeah. And, and, and even still that. towards the end, I still don't know where she stands. Yeah. And it would have made sense, though, because she hated this kid the whole time. Mm-hmm. So if they're bringing in this smart little code breaker that she was a dick to the whole time, yeah. well, it would make sense that just go with it. Let her be a double agent. Mm-hmm. And let her be the one that's going to kind of unravel this thing from the inside. And she hates this guy because she's got everybody else under her spell. That would, I think, been a better angle. Yeah. I but don't, I don't think she's even playing for the German side. I don't think so either. She's playing for her own side, whatever it may be. I guess. Um, good finale, though. 
I thought so. The finale was quite interesting. I didn't care at all, like at all, for the young dude that wanted to be part of the Nazis. He yeah, became, he was. He was. He was okay at first. Yeah, but he became really cartoony after. Yeah, like twisty mustache villain over the top yeah. just <sighs> and they're still off. keeping him around clearly yeah because he's gonna be the guy that's gonna go against the little guy and yeah all that stuff anyways yeah i don't know um but yeah you liked it i liked it i i i'm interested in the that kind of history stuff and regardless Obviously. So it kind of touches a little bit on it and dude how crazy was that scene where he they, the german made them sing Oh yeah, and then after the last guy, not like my tempo. F- <laughs> oh Jesus, not and, my tempo extreme. <laughs> and like, but yeah. what actually got me the most was the last, the last uh, prisoner that s- was screaming when it was all done. Yeah, like holding in all like th- those scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were just so hard to watch. Yeah. But they were so fucking well done, which is why I kept mentioning last week that it was just read the room because you guys do something like this that's so horrifically beautiful yeah. in the way that it's a, of its execution. Mm-hmm. Aside from the chessboard thing, I didn't really care for that either. Um, it was a little too over the top. The singing thing also was a little over the top, but there seemed to be something sadistic about it on a lower level than the chess scene. Yeah. That and then just the reaction of the guard of the of the prisoner after that was just releasing all of this emotion. Just yeah. holy shit! When they were doing, um, I don't know the song. The yeah, that was the band playing. I know with the right, but like when they had the band playing that, oh my god! Like one after the other, and then everyone was singing it after. I was like, oh man, what a like. And that's what pissed me the fuck off. They had the ability to do something like that, but then the rest of the show, it felt like they got kind of lazy, which I guess for that, make those parts the best parts, yeah. for sure, because you obviously want to make them. But like, oh, you guys had such good ability in some spots and not really good spots. Mm-hmm. or not. You didn't show the same uh, art- artistry in the other scenes. Yeah. But anyways, uh, did you see Spencer Confidential? I did not. It looks good, though. It's like one of those movies that's. I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, it's Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg, and they do great things together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Winston Duke's in it, and he was really good in it too. Yeah, man, that dude is big. Holy yeah. fuck! Um, is it meant to be buddy cop serious or buddy kind cop of essentially? But it has some comedic relief for sure. Lots, lots. Yeah. But like, it, it handles it pretty well. It's a little. It's almost so corny it's good, but it's also not that that corny. Yeah. It just rides the, it for some somehow it found the right line to ride. Mm. And it wasn't afraid of it. It embraced it. It went with it. It had fun with it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I was just I don't know. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um I would say this was like it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? You got nothing to do. Have a watch. You'll enjoy yeah. it. It's no other guys by any means. It's no, uh, like, nothing like Passed that. Passed by it so many times, and, like, I... It's one of those things. They have to be in the right mindset to start something new, and... Dude, Soph and I have... Every time we try to think of something new, we're currently re-watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine for the 10th time. I'm back on Family Guy. I finished How like, Met Your Mother. Jesus. I'm going to do the, the Office, and blah, like, blah, blah. Jesus. Um... Did you? I didn't watch it, but did you watch the Black Widow trailer? I did. Did you like it? I did like it. it. Actually, gave a little bit more into the Taskmaster and how super dope character. How he's gonna actually embody? Like we're saying, he does the fighting style, but there's a lot more to it. Is there? And I, uh, I know you and Anthony don't like watching any more trailers, but you might have to because you won't get the movie for a very long time. <laughs> I guess. Hey. Yeah. I. I. Uh, so, I was going to when you sent it. Yeah. But I held off. Um, yeah. Because I've seen enough of this movie, and I'm I'm not as excited as I originally was when it first was released. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just feel the timeline yeah. is wrong, yeah. at least for me. But the fact that they do have Taskmaster, and I do know a little bit about him, mm-hmm. um, at least enough to ask the question after, would he be able to beat the shit out of Batman? Just a thought. Batman. Okay. Or was Batman win again? Let's just... You know, okay. um, but to put him against someone like a Black Widow is a great choice because she is so badass in her own right, versatile. Yeah, and they're fighting super style, versatile, yeah. uh, super adaptable, all of that. So mm-hmm. great, 
great counterpoint yeah. to her. But I'm like, I don't want to watch anymore. Well, like, oh, get well, it's like we said, she'll be a very good contender in the sense that like she's gone up against the aliens, like the children of Thanos. And she, like I said, I know it was a little bit unplausible that she was able to keep her own. I'm like, I think she's probably been training with Cap, who's superhuman in himself. So it's like... I think it's it, mostly like the... Um, it's her agility that probably has saved her the most. And yeah. just she just counter she just uses counter moves to get her way around. That's the same thing with Hawkeye in the first Avengers and her. It's like how what are these two spies doing amongst these beasts and machines and Well, gods they said it themselves. Stuff, right? Like yeah. we were not trained for this shit. So no, the exactly. first Avengers, so and they did what they were supposed to do, where they just hung out behind the car and made some shots. And yeah, it was a little unreal. Again, whatever, whatever. Yeah, um, we digress. <laughs> I, do, I digest. So, Taskmaster, Taskmaster versus Batman, I think would be an unreal fight, even more than Batman and Moon Knight. Bat I'll Fleck. tell you that, huh? Batfleck, obviously, or just in sure. general, Batman. I, I would character. just say in general, but let's take Batfleck, which is probably the closest in terms of combat. Okay, just any, even Arkham. No, let's go Arkham. Okay, okay that's fair. Um. I th- I honestly think that Taskmaster might mm-hmm. be able to take him, but for a short like for a short window, mm-hmm. right? Because he's got that ability to actually mimic yeah. the other person's fighting style and mm-hmm. use that against them, yeah. and and he gets better and better and better because of it. I think it's like Azrael, Azrael, Azrael. Anyways, there's a another uh, villain in the Batman. Oh yeah, he's in Gotham too. He was in Gotham. Yeah, yes. Azrael, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. So I think I think he would be able to take him for a bit, but then Batman would just be able to find the way. Mm-hmm. He always does. He's just smarter than most people. Fair enough. Any thoughts? Based on that trailer, too? No, I, I enjoyed it. He gave a, a no, little bit. Any thoughts on Taskmaster for Spider-Man? Oh, Batman. sorry. I don't no, about the trailer like, anymore. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Okay. Right. Um, that's, that's what you need in a video game. <laughs> that's true. DC versus Marvel. That's true. Uh, I mentioned A Quiet Place 2 being pushed back and Mulan's being pushed back and a bunch of other stuff. And supposedly John Krasinski has A Quiet Place 3 already in his mind if A Quiet Place 2 goes well, which kind of makes sense because it's his story. So he's like, what he doesn't use in this first one, he uses in the second one. What he doesn't use in the second one, he can use in the third one. Mm-hmm. If it's your story, it's... I mean, it's- even... Sequels that come out all the time is because they're from something. Yeah. Well, just... Ultimately, he wasn't even considering the second one, I guess he said. Really? I, I think originally he didn't have it in mind, but then just kind of happened again. You know, you get, back in the, you, be... get ba- you get back in the writing room and you're like, okay, yeah. what's the plausibility behind all this? And how can we make this work? I would have, I think if I was him, I probably wouldn't have done the second one, but it, there was so, it made so much money. So question i think i've already kind of spoiled myself he's he dies in the first one clearly oh yeah okay so he's not in the second one he is but in a different capacity oh okay like i by the by the trailer i only saw the one trailer okay it does show the pre quiet place one moments and oh, then okay. post more as a flashback yeah okay. um he dies pretty spectacularly in the first one like in a really like that's a fu- that, that's a dad that's a dad mm-hmm. you know um yeah it's so good. I remember watching going and seeing it myself at like three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Pit, like there was two other people in the theater. It was yeah. awesome. I haven't done that in a long time. I need to do that. So S- Robert Orchi, who wrote the Amazing Spider-Man Two, is supposedly doing another Spider-Man spinoff. Okay. Don't know much more than that. Different Spider-Man. It apparently it's different. It has nothing to do with the MCU. It has nothing to do with Why? the Sony verse. It has nothing to do with anything. Why would they let him? I don't know. It could be a cartoon. But even still, any Spider-Man has to be approved by Sony. And I don't have enough details on this, really, Mm -hmm. to say. It just seems like a lot of fucking just don't. Why? There's already enough. There's already jokes about how many Spider-Man there are in Batman. I think Spider-Man and Batman have the most movies to their names. With the Yeah, with the different actors in most of them. Just in general. Um, and not only that, you sent the report from IGN that Spider-Man 3 starts filming in July. The MCU one, yeah. The MCU. So Tom Holland confirmed that the third MCU Spider-Man movie will start filming in July and has an absolute insane story, which I'm super stoked for because I really, 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 really liked Far From Home. Mm -hmm. And it ended so well. I know. That's two, that's two great ones from Spider-Man on its own. Like, I would say the first one was really good. Yeah. But, but without better. Michael Keaton as the vulture, it wouldn't have been. Yeah. But the second one was very good. Mm-hmm. I do 
they I loved the aside from the fact that the um, spider sense mm-hmm. or the spider tingle scene yeah. was just beautifully done. Yeah. I do remember from Civil War that he did kind of have his spider sense mm-hmm. because when he was fighting Falcon and Winter Soldier, he kind of was like, oh, God. And then he ducked because Falcon had thrown something at him. Yeah. But anyways, that's a very minor like continuity error. In that uh, yeah. I just like the way that they – it's just cool that they brought it forward because even in Infinity War, his spider sense was tingling yeah. when he – when the, the ship So maybe he had it, just wasn't – doesn't didn't know, didn't know how to hone it in. Sure. So it's like or use it to that ability. Yeah, he's like yeah. he just knew like it did it for him. It was like autopilot. Right. Whereas now he took on manual mode and sure. he was able to just like, okay, I got this. Great way to put it. Actually, so, very good way. So that I think that's where it's not a complete continuity error, but it's more of like a realization of his powers and that kind of stuff. And like it was still pretty fresh for him, basically. Smart. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Noise. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I saw you liked my. <laughs> The gif I sent to Anthony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anthony was telling us that one of him and his buddies got sick during something. And I was like, well, you guys just got to stop making out. And he was like, I was literally going to text back. I did. We weren't making out. <laughs> and he's like, I shouldn't have set myself up like that. So I sent him a gif of like a basketball highlight reel of an alley oop, perfectly timed. It was really funny if you were there. Oh, my God. Um, let's go into some Thor love and thunder. Yeah. And also some Guardians news. So first, Guardians is that... No, not Guardians. Is that... What the fuck am I talking about? Thor Love and Thunder may have its theme song. We all remember, and I fondly remember, the Immigrant song being used in Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. I still argue that the first use of it is better than the second. Mm-hmm. But that's besides the point. And now it looks like... Uh, band manager Wendy Dio of the band Dio mm-hmm. is going to allow them or has said that they are using the heavy metal song Rainbow in the Dark by Dio. Now, I'm not going to pretend like, oh, I'm so good. I know all this stuff. I don't. I know some Dio songs. I know he rocks freaking hard. I just don't know this one in particular. But I'm sure it's going to be good if Taika Waititi picked it. It may not have the same impact. It may be used in the same way. But it seems like it's going to fit the motif very well. So that's cool. Other stuff. Vin Diesel might have accidentally mentioned that the Guardians will be in Thor but they're not sure, or maybe some of them, they're not sure to what capacity. My guess is it's going to be like an opening thing. Like, hey, guys, do you guys want to come on set for like half an hour and we'll just like start you off and then Thor will be on his way, maybe? Yeah. It could uh, it could be a full-blown part of it, maybe one scene to kick it off, because is three supposed to be done before Love and Thunder? It's a good question, yes. It's already done filming. No, wait, that's Suicide Squad. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I honestly... So depending on where it falls in the MCU timeline... They might even be filming it at the same time. And then release one before and then one after. Yeah, maybe. Timeline thing would make a big difference because if it's like Thor Love and Thunder, then you basically have a jump off point that, okay, end game, he went off with them, he did some things, and it'll be like them parting ways and him doing his thing. Right. Finding Jane again and this and that and her becoming the Thor S or whatever. Right. Thor. Jane and Foster. Yeah, Jane Lady Foster, Thor, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that'd be interesting. And and Vin Diesel did say that it's yeah. going to be adult Groot in this one. Oh, there you go. But He's I don't back. know if it's going to be adult Groot like the from the first one. Because uh, probably not. he's probably many, many, many years That's old. But my Groot. guess, yeah, it seemed like it's Grandpa Groot yeah. in the first one. Yeah. Which is actually such a great character arc. It's like, we started him super old, and guess what? We're Benjamin Button is ass. Yeah. And then they bring him all the way back. I That's guess true. not really Benjamin Button. They just no, start him from quite. a baby again. Phoenix style. Yeah, there you go. Reborn from his branches. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to ob- I don't want to see too much Guardians in Thor 4. I want to see Thor. I want to see Jane Foster. I want to see Valkyrie. You know what I now, mean? Now, like, would you want to see more Thor and Guardians, though? So what did I say? Did no, I say you you Bruce? said you wouldn't want to see much Guardians and Thor. Right. But would you like the reverse? 
No, I think a cameo would be fine. I mean, the problem with yeah. Thor is that now he's just OP, and it's really hard to do that because, like, he could he could potentially like just decimate the Guardians. What mm-hmm. are they, honestly? Yeah, compared to him. Oh yeah, they're nothing. So he could wipe them the fuck out. Yeah. Um. So it's I think clearly they're on the same side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, that's a good thing, right? Not realistic, but <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying, in terms of like his overall power, it's pretty big. Yeah, and his presence on the team. And his pre- Yeah. Um. And I mean, there's only so much you can do the same bit over and over where Star Lord and him are having like a power struggle. Yeah, exactly. Before, like, it was it was hilarious in Endgame, Infinity War. It was mm-hmm. hilarious in Endgame. All of that. Yeah. And then it's just like, okay, we've, we've seen this. So no, I do, I don't care to see Guardians in Thor, and I don't see care. I don't care to see Thor in Guardians. If they mm-hmm. do do it, then cool. But uh, you, at this point, you trust them enough. They're gonna do it. Correct. I trust James Gunn. I trust Taika Waititi for sure. So yeah, between 100%. the both of them, they'll do it justice regardless. But I will say a cameo of the Guardians in Thor seems a little bit more story wise. Again, it all depends where it falls. If it's Thor's Love and Thunder supposed to come out before Guardians, then mm-hmm. great jump off point. In the sense that, let's say the events of Guardians 3 and the events of Love and Thunder are at the same time, but release date of the movie itself is separate obviously mm-hmm. so again it's all in their timeline it's all how this all falls to place we still have to get through uh doctor strange technically right I is guess that before so. i have no idea anymore i don't know. I have no idea where like phase four or phase TV five stuff because falcon and winter soldier well, has been pushed I, other, back. Th- other than the tv stuff right because doctor strange has something to do with wandavision yeah and half of it they said is going to be in the tv world and the other half is so, going to be in like the real life nightmare so let's say black widow is the marvel movie we're supposed to receive this year. Yeah. And then the TV series we're supposed to receive are basically Falcon and WandaVision. Because Loki's not until 2021. Exactly. So then that'll jump off the year after. We'll get another MCU movie. Mm. And then one Loki. Maybe Loki will come out then. Mm. Season one. Who knows? Something like that. Interesting. Yeah. I am curious as to what Christian Bale is going to play for Love and Thunder. I'm I'm actually surprised he's even in Mm-hmm. And he's confirmed. Mm-hmm. You know they get up his alley? No. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the only reason... In my mind, he only did Batman for... was because of Christopher Nolan. Yeah. And the fact that Christopher Nolan had the vision that he had for it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not doubting Taika Waititi for it. It's just so strange that it's Christian Bale doing it. Mm-hmm. He seems like such... It just seems like something he you wouldn't expect him to do. Maybe this could bring um, a darker... Like... I don't think you can get much darker than The Machinist. No, no, no. Um, I'm saying for the for the oh, what am I trying to the the theme of like Love and Thunder is going to be a lot darker than what Ragnarok was. At the end of the day, Ragnarok was fairly lighthearted with all the the colors, the 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 songs, and all that kind of stuff. Like, did you kind of have the feel of that in a sense? I like, did, it was but bad. it's also like, the com- end of Asgard. So compared there was that- compared to Thor, I'm. More so like aesthetically. Aesthetics, if you turn yeah. the volume down for sure, and you just yeah. saw it without any sound, then it's like, oh, this is super colorful and everything like that. Yeah. But I mean, thematic. The events happening, yes, are very intense. I'm just saying more the palette, what you're seeing. Thor, yeah. Dark World was dark. Yeah, the it Dark Elves. Literally and, dark. Yeah. yeah so start to I think Love and, and Thunder might heart. actually have, be the hybrid of both, and where this is where Bale might be more intrigued because, again, mm-hmm. he falls onto the darker side of stuff at the end of the day. I'd just be I curious say, as to what he would play. I what, He has to play someone older. But he's a villain. So a to villain. what to what extent? Ooh. That's the that's Someone the in the Norse, uh, Norse lore, maybe. I have he's no got to contend with Thor. He could play his brother, Balder. I thought of that, too. Balder's technically younger and prettier. Is he, though? That's what he's meant to be. Meant to, but he. I mean, Thor's also meant to be a huge, huge dick, and he's not. We love him. In the lore, he is and he isn't. I guess, yeah. He's a good um, guy. we like him. Yeah, as opposed if to you're like, gonna like if you're gonna follow race. anything like Balder was protected by Frey. Remember, like how yeah. Uh, if we're going was, if we're going God of War four lore, no, that's it just that's mythology. General, that's Norse yeah. mythology. It's actually I, very very well known. And uh, Freya always wanted to protect his innocence and his beauty, right? And that's why he was indestructible. It got overlooked. It was mistletoe. Yes. So this is what this was an undoing, obviously. See, and that's going to be the strange thing because then they're going to have to try to justify a brother that 
was never around for the first one. All the flashbacks going She's forward. Just like a sister that was never in the first two. Right. Yeah. So it's very possible. Now the whole exile thing won't work again. They right. probably have to figure out maybe a self exile. Like I just left. Yeah. And for Freya never to mention it is a whole other thing too. Who knows? But the other one could be. It's, it's a little tricky right now. Again, yeah. some of the mythology at the end of the day is being. Oh, it's, it's the, yeah. It's it's, it's pick and choose at that point. So yeah. we don't have to. It doesn't have to be to the T necessarily. But yeah, Odin is not the gentle all father. We all, you know, exactly, he's yeah. a dick. Same with Zeus. Zeus was a dick. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, he's a great actor, so it's not like I don't want him to be in. It's just super confusing. Um. Mark Ruffalo confirmed for She-Hulk now. He's okay. officially going to be in it from uh, everything that I'm seeing, yep. everything that we've seen. It's not a just, oh, there's rumors or there's rumors. He's actually going to be in it, which I think is fine because then they'll probably go relatively close to the lore of where he has to give his cousin a blood transfusion. But, again, that'd be very stupid of him. And also, are we dealing with... I mean, of course, we'll be dealing with um, Mark Ruffalo in his full Professor Hulk. Mm-hmm thing so i don't know that's interesting i'm curious as to what they're gonna do and i've already already, i know we've already covered this but i'm curious as to what they're going to do with all the e3 things that were going to come out from what i understand ps5 was supposed to be released at by the end of february that didn't happen they could you know what they could still put on e3 and not in that sense it'd be a webinar kind of thing everyone can tune in yeah and watch it and like everyone, all the platforms could have their thing, mm-hmm. and it can be very contained in the sense like maybe it's from their their headquarters, or maybe it's a pre recorded setup where they get to do their presentation, mm-hmm. but just not at that level. Right. My I'm I'm half expecting them to just release a bunch of trailers. Be like, this is what we're gonna do. So here's the Sony stuff, and then they'll have a, an executive from Sony just talking about it as a webinar. Yeah. Type of deal. Yeah. yeah here's yeah, our trailers. Exactly. And they'll just have the teams and their individual thing, package it together, mm. and deliver it out as a YouTube series or a web series of sorts. Yeah. I don't think that would be a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. Um, Comic-Con's going to be interesting because I think Comic-Con is when. That's canceled, isn't it? No idea. I haven't heard Did anything. Did I say Comic-Con? I don't remember. I don't remember. Probably will be. Just like everything else. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. That's all I have. I don't know if you had anything else. Uh, we had the Godzilla Video, music video. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Nothing crazy, but... It's cool that they had Mike Tyson in there. Yeah. Monster. Uh, as much as you would expect from Eminem, like he gets pretty creative with his music videos and stuff like that. And I was interested to see how he would do this, if he would go like kind of wacky or he would go like dark and serious, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. But it's it, it could go either way, really, at the end of the day. But I totally didn't realize that Juice World died. And, yeah. and Anthony yeah. told me why that happened. I'm like, well, that's just pretty silly. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's all I pretty much have. Jeez. But, yeah, the Godzilla trailer. Everyone's been wanting it. Well, since, the video. Since, for the video, sorry. The video. Ever since, yeah, ever it was since fun. he came out, I was like, I want him to do the video. And let's see what happens. It, it was fun. It would kind of remind me of some of his older videos that were yeah. just like, I don't know, they're just fun to watch. He used mm-hmm. to have, he would have really good music videos. Yeah. It's like him, the Foo Fighters. Trying to think who else. Queens of the Stone Age had some pretty good ones. Um, there's there's few people out there that have really funny mm-hmm. and fun kind of music videos. Yeah, those are the three that come to mind. But there's yep. obviously a lot more. I just can't think right now. Um, that's it. That's all. Um, can't speak. Thank you once again for tuning in to another week. Thank you for all the people that subscribed on YouTube to getting helping us get to a thousand. Um, where we were originally going to meet Sunday to go over some shit of what we're going to do with the future of the podcast. Oh yeah. Um, but I doubt that's going to happen right now. Mind you, it still could happen. He only has the flu, so he's probably fine. So, anyways, we're planning on putting some stuff together, just content stuff, not so much content in regards to how this podcast is going to run because I feel like we've gotten a good formula now compared to how we used to be obviously we'll be changing that but i think more so what's going to be delivered to you guys and how you're going to be able to access certain parts of it and by access i mean just see it like more clips more audio stuff more videos more Mm -hmm. whatever the fuck and um going from there yeah um 
that's it. Um, Effort Podcast, part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, connects us. It's got that being funneled through with finances and mm-hmm. money. Um, you can find us on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at the F podcast and on Facebook at the F podcast mm-hmm. and Elise Canadian on Instagram and uh, YouTube. Of course, the F podcast, subscribe, like say, and share all the stuff to your friends. If you want to share it to your friends, uh, bio.fm slash. I think the F podcast is our new kind of link thing, uh, replacing link tree. Mm-hmm. Um, and stay tuned for more stuff. We really appreciate everybody that's been listening to us and has enjoyed the content i hope you've been enjoying the content i haven't been doing a lot of deep dives but i'm really working on get making that happen um because i really do enjoy the deep dives and that's it um patient zero wasn't able to be here with us but uh <laughs> i'm g i'm bass and we're out <laughs>